Have you ever wondered how to build a small ball out of plywood? Or maybe you just want to build a cool D20 to show your friends. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you the angles and the techniques I use to get these built. Hey, what's up, guys? You may remember a video I did a while back where I built a small ball out of Baltic birch plywood. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna build a ball very similar to this, except this one has 60 triangles and two different bevel angles. This one only has 20 triangles. They're all equilateral, and there's only one bevel angle. So this should be a good starting point for someone who wants to build one of these in their own shop. It's gonna start out as an icosahedron, which is a 20-sided shape. So if you wanna build a cool D20 for your coffee table, you can just stop here. But I'm going to take you on through the process of sanding it and we'll end up with that out of this. So if you have some time, stick around for a while and we'll get started on the video. Our plywood ball is going to start out as a piece of 3 quarter inch 13 ply Baltic birch. And it's uh, 24 inches by 7 inches wide. We're going to have to cut that into two strips that are 3 and 3 sixteenths wide. But before we do that, I always like to mark the face of the material with a couple of lines. That way I know that all my triangles are being cut from the same face and that line will be parallel with the long grain of the material. So I'll go ahead and put a couple of uh, heavy lines on there. And we'll cut it into strips. So now we have our boards over here at the miter saw and we need to cut them up into triangles. Now there's enough material here to, to make 22 equilateral triangles if you cut them right. So I'll show you how I do that. First we're going to set our saw on 30 degree miter. There won't be any bevel so it's on zero here. We're going to cut our first cut and we're just going to flop the board over and when the blade comes down you're just going to want a nice point on your triangle. And when that, before you make that cut, put a little mark on your saw and just keep flopping that board back and forth, cutting on that mark. Again, these are just rough cuts, so they don't have to be super accurate, but you do kind of want uh, to be all this, pretty close to the same size. So let's get started doing that. Okay, so just keep doing that until all the material is cut up. You should end up with 22 triangles. And then we can take those over to the table saw. So now we have all of our triangles roughly cut to size. And we need to put a finished bevel on the three sides of this triangle. And we're going to do that on this table saw sled. Now, if you haven't tuned up your table saw in a while, now would be a good time to do that. Just make sure your blade is parallel to your miter slot and the fence on your sled is square to the miter slot. What we're going to do is add this piece here to put our triangle uh, parallel to the blade as it cuts. This triangle is cut at 30 degrees on the miter saw, but this is really a 90 degree angle. So what we need to do is 
Um, we have 30 degrees here. 90 minus 30 is going to leave us 60 degrees here. So we need to cut this piece over on the miter saw again and add that to our, our fence. I've got a piece of scrap wood here that I'm going to use for making the fence. Um, one thing you want to do, you're using three quarter inch material, so make sure your fence pieces, this piece is 13 16 so make sure it's thicker um, so that you have a nice edge here. And once this piece gets beveled, it's not wanting to ride up over that edge if it's a thinner piece here. Um, this piece needs to be cut at 60 degrees. Now my saw only goes to 50 degrees and most of them don't go past 50. There are a few available that do, but that's not what I have here. So to cut 60 degrees, what we're going to do is find a piece that has a, a nice square corner on it. Make a nice clean cut. You want 90 degrees here. And for safety's sake, make sure it's wide enough that it, it's covering the gap and it's on both sides of your fence when you're cutting this. Um, so we're going to cut a 30 degree miter and once we do that, the piece we cut off, the scrap piece, is going to be 60 degrees here. So it'll look like, it'll look like that. So square cut here and we will cut. So this piece will be 60 degrees. So we've got our 60 degree fence piece that we need to put on the sled. Now mine's already built, so I just ran a couple of inch and a quarter uh, face frame screws down to hold it on. And I made sure those are in line with the miter runner so they don't poke through the bottom. And you're gonna need a, a Desteco clamp. Um, this is gonna clamp the piece on when it's time to cut it it's going to hold it in place and it's going to be a lot safer, uh, safer way of doing it. You're also going to need to build a little stop like this so that you can put that on there. And for the final cut, we'll use the stop to determine the length of the sides. So this is the point that you've probably been waiting for. What is that angle on the side of the triangle? Well, for me, it's 21.7 degrees. Now here's my disclaimer. It may be different for you. Here's how I do it. I would highly recommend that you buy yourself a digital angle gauge. Um, some folks will say they're not accurate. They're plus or minus two tenths of a degree. But for 40 bucks, you're not gonna find any way to set your saw that's that accurate. Um, I like this particular model here. It's made by eye gauging. And I've had this over 10 years. But it's got magnets on all three sides of it. So what you do, you set it on your saw, zero it out, and then put it on the side of your blade, and that'll give you a reading. Um, so once you get your, set your saw to 21.7, if you get a, a set of test pieces that you like, then lock it down and go with it. Now let's, let's show you here what, uh, what I come up with. So I set my saw at 21 degrees using this particular gauge, this is what happened. It's too tight. I can never pull those together. So I set some up at 21.9 degrees. Well, it closes up, but it's just way too loose. I, I don't like that at all. So I cut this one at 21.7 degrees. And this is what I want to see. Just a little pressure to close it up, and all of the joints are nice and tight on the inside. So once I do my test piece, I'll lock my stuff down and I will go with it. But I always use some cheaper material here to do your test pieces first before you start using your more expensive material. Uh, it's just gonna save you some time and inconvenience. We are ready to cut the finished bevel on the sides of our triangles. Now here's a few pointers I have. This line we drew before we cut it in the triangles is parallel to the outside edge, the long grain, of the veneer on the outside. So our first cut, we want that edge to be facing that direction. So if you want to, as a reminder, just put a line here 
and you can write long grain or something, whatever you want on there. Just to remind you that uh, this line here should be parallel to that line when you cut. Now the reason we do that is this will be the first cut. And we want to cut just a little bit off the edge of that with our bevel cut. But our second cut will now be with the long grain of the material. And that's important because we want to, if at all possible, preserve this little point on our last cut. We want that little tip to be on there because it is going to be the tip that touches our stop. And if all of those tips are still on there, it's going to increase our accuracy because that's going to be the part that sets the depth of our third and final cut. So, you know, don't panic if you chip a little bit off because these pieces are oversized and you can always take another little cut um, to do that. And even this blade here has got a few cuts on it, so it might not um, come out chip free every time. But on that second cut, just slow down and just try as best you can to keep that, that little tip in point. Also, on your first cut, you're going to have to kind of do a little trial and error to get this blade. We want that blade to come just a little bit past on top of the material all the way down. You don't want the blade to come out the side of the material because that'll give you a weird bevel. Okay, so once you have that set, come over here and put a little line just on the base of your, of your sled. So these are all pretty much the same size rough cut, so the next piece you set down, you can just use that mark for alignment, lock it down, and cut it. Now on your second cut, you're cutting your first cut, then you're moving it around and putting your finished cut against the fence. Your second cut, you just want to be about, you know, maybe a sixteenth from that cut. So that's going to give you two fresh edges, and if you don't get it the first cut, just unlock it, back it off a little bit, and cut a little bit more. There's enough material here to um, give you a little bit of play. So we're going to cut two sides of all 22 triangles and set them aside. Then we're going to put our stop on and we're going to cut our third side, all of them with the stop on, so they'll be exactly the same length. So let's get started on that. All right, here we go. So long line over here. And I unplugged the saw because of safety concerns. And apparently I did not plug it back in. So always have your saw plugged in before you start to use it. You get a lot cleaner cut. Okay, first cut. Parallel to the long grain. Take our first test cut here.
Okay, so those first three turned out pretty good. Um, got a nice good point on there. Um, one thing I didn't mention, uh, they kind of look the same after a while, so put an X on the side that didn't get beveled so you don't have to look at it every time. Um, so kind of do that as you go, that way you know which side you have to cut for the third cut. So go ahead and cut uh, all 22 of them like that. And then the next step will be putting the stop on and doing the third side. All of our triangles now have a finished cut on two sides. And they all turned out pretty good. This one here, um, on my second cut, I kind of broke the corner of it off. So I took another cut to clean it up. So I wrote, I marked it with an S, meaning it's a little bit shorter. And I'm going to use it to set my stop. And then all the rest of them should be a little bit longer and it, they should clean up okay. But I'm gonna use the shortest one that I have uh, to set my stop. So basically, I'm gonna lock it down, do my test cuts again until I get a nice clean cut on here, and then leave it locked down. I'm gonna put my stop on there, and then I can cut the other 21 of them based on that stop, and they should all be exactly the same length on the sides. Um, the most important thing is that they all match the same, the same length. It doesn't really matter what that length is as long as it's close. Um, so I'll go ahead and start that. I kind of gooped up there a little bit, but that is my final cut. Um, let me get my stop here. Bring it up. And I've already used this stop a couple times, so the holes don't quite line up in the right place here, so this may cause some trouble. But Okay. So now the stop is set, and I'd like to put a little mark on there just so I know my stop's not moving. So that one is done. Now we can go ahead and cut the rest of them. Remember the X we put on there, that's just always going to be the side we're cutting for the final cut. Um, don't push them too hard. Make sure that nice little crisp corner hits your stop. Lock it down. So go ahead and cut the rest of them that way and we will be ready to start taping these things together and make them look like a ball.